Hello everyone, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Yes, I have another pen here. This was also purchased from Stilo A Stile for my birthday. I feel like there's a lot of pens from March and I don't normally have this many pens showing off in one month, but it was my birthday and I treated myself. This was, I have to say, fully influenced by Lori Tata of uh, Time with Tata. I saw this on her Instagram and just fell in love with the colors of this pen. So it is a Memento Zero Grande from Leonardo Officina Italiana. And it's Memento Zero Grande 2.0. Oh, <laughs> and it comes with in that sleeve. And then you have this huge big box and open up and we have the international guarantee and then the pen itself. So, okay, let's put this away and then we can fully focus on the pen. And then here we have the Momento Zero Grande 2.0 in sand. And I'm going to remove this little here but um, the, mail, the nails kind of match. <laughs> I was kind of going for a neutral brown theme, but when I first opened this, and I couldn't wait, I did open this before unboxing. When I first opened this, I wasn't sure about the color of the resin. And the way that they do this is they actually lay the resin down like this, and then cut across like this so that you can see the different layers of the resin going from the top to the bottom of the pen and the layers of that resin they have the different colors of you know the lighter more beige resin and then you've got all the way to the black and at first when i saw this i saw this big patch of black and i'm like what the heck is going on here and then when you look closer you can see all of the glitters in there and i really think actually now that i've had time to get used to this I love the neutral colors and I actually really love that patch of black because when you think about sand at a beach, there's going to be a variety of colors depending on the depth of the sand, the the water in the sand and things like that. So I thought, you know what, I am actually now loving the different colors of the resin, the translucency, and it's just gorgeous. I keep spinning it. So this is number 1557 in the Memento Zero Grande 2.0 and I will just go over the features and parts of this pen. So in terms of how many turns it takes to uncap, it's actually just a little bit over one and a quarter or even a little bit over one. And then you have here a steel Yovo nib. So this is different from my Momento Zero Grande 2.0 in the angel skin. That one has a 14 karat uh, nib and this one is a steel Yovo nib. This is a piston filler pen so you do have the ink window here and then the piston mechanism throughout the body and then here is what you twist to be able to pull the ink up into that piston chamber and I'm doing that and you can see the piston mechanism in there and once you've twisted that and you can bring all the ink up into that chamber. And this piston actually takes in 1.5 milliliters of ink. So that is quite the huge ink capacity in there. And then there is a bit of a step from the grip section to the body. Normally that would actually bother me, but after using the uh, Grande 2.0 in the Angel Skin for a little over a year now, it's actually very comfortable in my hand and that step doesn't bother me too, too much. But loving the way that this looks overall. And then you've got the cap here, which actually is a very functional cap as well. And I'm gonna test it again because a lot of people, when they have their clip, they want it to easily go onto their book. So. Yeah, and actually that holds on pretty, pretty well. Another way that you could test it is, I'm going to take this envelope here. It's a little bit thicker, and that one requires a little bit more effort to be able to lift and put the pen on there. Let's try, and I'm trying different things here because I wanna see how well it actually is going to clip onto a book. So this is my Sterling Ink Planner. If you wanted to clip it to there. It doesn't roll on as easy, but actually easy to lift up 
and put on there as well. So let's go ahead and compare the Memento Zero Grande 2.0 to other pens in my collection. So here we have the Memento Zero Grande 2.0 and I'm going to show it compared to my other Memento Zero Grande 2.0 in Angel Skin. So you've got the two there and then I'm going to compare it to a Memento Zero so you can see the difference between the Grande versus the regular model. And then another pen in my collection from Leonardo is the Furore. So you can actually see the Furore is closer in length to the Memento Zero Grande. I don't have a Furore Grande, which I can imagine it must be much bigger. The Furore is actually a good size for me. So then let's compare to others as well that I have in my collection. So I do have my Estherbrook SD. And then I'm going to compare to the Pelican M800. And then I'm going to compare to, there's a few others that I want to compare to here. And I might have to remove some in order to compare. So let's remove the angel skin from there, putting that back in my drawer. And then comparing it to the size of the Lamy 2000 comparing it to the size of the Pilot Kakuno, which is still in my collection. I love that pen. And then lastly, comparing it to the Sailor Pro Gear. So you can see the size of that pen compared to all of these other ones. And the Memento Zero Grande 2.0 is definitely the biggest, and you can tell that in length as well as in the width of the pen. So let's go ahead and uncap these, except I won't be uncapping this because the nib of the <laughs> Sailor Pro Gear is with a different pen, so I'll uncap the rest of these. So there are all of the pens uncapped, and you can actually see in terms of length, it's pretty on par with the Furore model, and then just a, just slightly longer than the Estherbrook SD and the Pelican M800. And looking at all of these, the Lamy 2000 is the shortest, but then also has, in terms of just the exposed nib length, the smallest. And then in terms of the nib size, these are all actually pretty similar in nib size. So these are all number six nibs, and I believe they're all Yovo number six nibs, minus the Pilot Kakuno here. And then you've got the 18 karat gold nib on the Pelican M800. So in terms of sizing, it definitely is the widest in terms of the width of the pen. And then with the Leonardo models, you can see that there is a step between the grip section and then the body. It's not flush or gradual like it is on the Estherbrook SD. And then you could also see here the way that the grip section is, this one has more of a how do I say this? Almost like a bottleneck shape where it goes from, you know, narrower and then widens a little bit on the way to the body. Whereas this, you've got a little bit of a lip on the way to the nib, and then it's more of a straight section on the way to the body here. And what you can see as well in the difference between the, I'm going to move these aside here, between the Memento Zero model and the Memento Zero Grande is you can see that, you know, they still have the rings here on the band and then the clip size is pretty much the same so you can see that the cap is bigger and the grip section actually between the two in terms of length is about the same size the threads are slightly longer on the memento zero than they are on the grande 2.0 which is really interesting to me actually but yeah you can see the difference in size and the dimension of the grip sections so let's go ahead and weigh the memento zero grande 2.0 all right so the weight of this pen capped is 30 grams and then uncapped and remember this is without any ink in it make sure you stay stay is 19 grams so the cap itself is 11 grams it's actually a very good weighted pen and if we actually just look at it in my hand here I have I say generally um, I have small hands so a model like this can be quite big you can certainly 
post this pen and it posts pretty securely, but it does make it a little bit back heavy, especially for me, and it makes it a massive pen in my hand. So I don't normally post my pens, but for those who do, it is postable. And then just looking at where my finger sits, my fingers sit pretty much on those threads, but they are not at all sharp. And then even the step between the grip section and the body doesn't bother me at all. And normally that would, but after using the angel skin in the mzg 2.0 for a little over a year i'm actually quite used to that and i actually do like this size now so let's go ahead and find an ink to put in this pen okay so looking through the different inks that i have in my collection here let's see i don't feel like any of those reds or burgundies would go very well with this i feel like a brown or even a gray and i don't really have any grays at the moment i need to purchase some and I'm wondering, like, there's a really, there should be a nice brown beige color. And for those wondering about this, this is actually just a binder, like a rings binder that I purchased off of Amazon. And the paper in here is uh, Tamoy River paper, the uh, old style Tamoy River paper that I purchased off Amazon as well. And then I cut it down and hole punched it to fit in here. And then the stamps are ones that I bought from uh, Gutgauter in Japan. So let's see. These are a bit too pink to be matching with this. I'm looking through my brown inks and I realize in my brown ink exploration, I totally forgot to put Shirakashi in there. Uh, Dusted Truffle would look amazing in this. Yeah, Dusted Truffle would look fantastic. Oh, and I forgot to say that the ink or the nib on here is a fine Yovo nib. But yeah, Dusted Truffle would look lovely. Actually, even kelp tea would look really good in this. Interesting. Or majestic maple syrup, I think, would be too light to go in here. Um, but dusted truffle. Ooh, weeping willow also would be a good match for those lighter areas. And funny enough, when I look at this, just the way that the resin is in those layers... Like this one looks like it's slanted a bit, but maybe it's just the way that the pen curves. But yeah, Weeping Willow would look great in here. And possibly even Muddy Sand, but I don't even have Muddy Sand anymore. So those are, let's see. I, I know that Weeping Willow is not a great writing ink, so I don't necessarily want to test it with that. And then help tea I know is a drier ink so may not be the best representation of how this nib can perform and dusted truffle you know what let's go ahead and try it with dusted truffle mm, I don't know dusted truffle or let's keep looking and see if there is another ink that I could possibly try with this probably not a pink I love how uh, Kristen of Life Inspires Design can find like any shade of ink to go with any pen and Ooh, Autumn Forest would be so interesting because of those olives in the base color. Hmm. You know what? Shirakashi is coming up again. And Shirakashi, Sailor Moon Shirakashi might actually work. And let's see what else we've got here. Uh, not Olive Swirl. Uh, I don't think any of the teals or turquoises or blues would work. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Gosh, I've got a few in here. Purple. No. Although armadillo, if I still had that, I would I could that one would be a good one to try. Uh, let's see what else here. Poison Envy. Armadillo's coming up again or Madame Mulberry. No, not Earl Grey. I don't think the greys would actually work in here very well. Although Fuyu Shogun, which I no longer have. Smoke box could have been oh smoke box could have been a good one. I think I'm gonna go back to different browns here let's try maybe dusted truffle yeah let's do that let's try dusted truffle okay so we have here my pin profile page these stamps are from everyday explorer co and this is her i believe it's her new pen day uh, stamp collection so the brand is leonardo Piscina Italiana and the model is Memento 
zero grande 2.0 and the nib is a fine and the color of the pen I guess is sand and it is inked with diamine ink vent dusted truffle and wow it is smooth 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 beautiful so just the quick story then behind this pen I feel like I am in my brown neutral pens era. I sold eight pens in March, which helped me fund this as my well, one of my birthday pens from Stilo A Stile. I was heavily influenced by Lori Tata of Time with Tata. I have grown accustomed to the larger size of the Memento Zero Grande 2.0, and I love the colors of this resin. Love this addition to my collection, and this nib is lovely. One thing I'm also going to add here, just for information's sake, that when I purchased this from Stilo A, Stile, it was 213 euro, and that should be the euro symbol. And then in terms of US dollars, this comes out to about 226, 226.93 according to Google as of today. And this should say euro so not as expensive or pricey as my memento zero grande 2.0 in angel skin but that one also has a 14 karat gold nib and this one is a steel nib so actually when you look at the pricing of this this is actually comparable to some of the prices of you know for example an estrabrook sd or um even actually the the lamy 2000 is getting close to this price range as well. I know some people don't think a pen like this is worth it, especially if you just have the steel nib. But in terms of my stance on gold versus steel nibs, uh, I there are some steel nibs that I like writing with better than gold nibs. And it really just depends on the pen overall because it's not just about the nib, but it's the pen overall. So that is my little story behind my Memento Zero Grande 2.0 and my overall first impressions of it. I really like it. I love the, I'm getting accustomed to that resin. I know that black spot kind of bothered me at the beginning, but when you shine light on it, you can really see the sparkle in there. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, one thing I want to test actually is how easy this piston moves up and down. And actually it is very smooth going up and down. There's not too much friction with that piston. I've had pistons where uh, it was a little bit, there's a lot of friction going in there. It was difficult to move the piston up and down or in previous brand, or other brands of pens with piston fillers like this, uh, the piston actually came out and didn't work very well, but this one seems to be working quite well so far. So that is my unboxing of my Leonardo Officina Italiana of the Memento Zero Grande 2.0 in sand. It takes like a whole minute just to say the name of the pen, but so far I am happy with my birthday pen. I do feel like I'm going towards more of like the neutral pens at the moment, but every collection I think goes through its different eras and this is my kind of brown neutral pens era moment. All right, but that is it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.